Hello there World of Tankers, I'm Jordals Blitz, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the most used Tier 8 vehicle in tournaments in World of Tanks Blitz, which was the Object 252. If you guys paid attention to the stream held by Wargaming, thank you for hosting me, by the way, Wargaming, if you are watching this video. But in that stream, we noticed that pretty much every single team ran the Object 252, and not just like one or two of them, but literally the entirety of the team sometimes was Object 252s. GMA was running five of them at a time. Pramo was running five of them. Even some teams were running upwards of six Object 252s. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about why this tank is such a strong tier 8 heavy, and if it's worth it to pick up maybe next time it comes in the stores to run for your tier 8 tournament team, or save your money and buy a different heavy tank at that, maybe a tech tree one or a different tier 8 premium. So of course, if you like this type of content, please make sure to slap that subscribe button down below. Really does help out the channel, and congratulations to Pramo for winning the $6,000 prize pool in the tier 8 tournaments and also congratulations to GMA for coming in second place definitely both of those clans are not to be reckoned with and GMA for coming out just very soon and starting their tournaments up great job as well but starting off with what makes the Object 252 such a strong vehicle. First of all, it's the armor profile. This is one of the strongest armor profiles in the game. Now granted, it does have its weak spots, but if you're able to hide those weak spots, it's practically impenetrable to get through the frontal armor of this tank. And that's because the upper plate on this vehicle is, in my opinion, the thickest upper plate out of any single, uh, any single tier eight in the game. Because the upper plate on the tank's about 420 millimeters thick. And as well, the turret on this tank, which is something that's also very important is super super thick about I'd say about 400 millimeters because of course you know it's got all the uh, the Russian steep angles and stuff like that a little flat pancake turret so it does a great job at bouncing shells pretty much all around the turret now of course it does have its fair share of weak spots the first big 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 weak spot is the lower plate you can see that lower plate is massive it sticks out protrudes right out of the vehicle and yeah that lower plate only being about 170 millimeters thick is really not going to bounce all of the shells Although, as we saw there, the uh, the enemy team somehow managed to pen all of their shells on my track wheel, including the Tiger II. So we have just used both of our repair kits, which is definitely something you don't normally want to do, because now I'm kind of, well, uh, not really able to fix my tracks. But at the same time, I'm going to be getting into a side scraping position here, something this tank is notoriously, uh, notoriously strong at doing. Somehow, that shell managed to bounce on the frontal plate of that Tiger, but oh my god, that poor... That poor Tiger 2 just got pretty much ammo racked and ruined out of the game. So let's get a shot into this KV Force turret here. Um, I don't know if he's going to try and pen me here, but um, I'm not too worried. As you can see, our team just completely smashed the enemy right through the uh, through the roof here. This is a great game played by my team, and that Amarak, woof, that was a pretty deadly one at that. But getting back to the Object 252, well, you can see, judging that we did bounce every shell that's penned our tank so far, um, it's got great armor. Like, we were able to take a lot of shells in the track, and the first shell that did pen us, you can see, was right in the side armor in between the spaced armor, which of course makes sense. I did pull on side on there. As well, not only having great frontal armor, the side armor on this tank is fantastic. It's about, um, I'd say 220 millimeters thick on the upper part, which is very impressive. You do need to penetrate usually through the, uh, the little crease there where you can see that tiger exactly penned me. So nice shot, by the way, on that tiger there. But um, yeah, the, the tank is practically impossible to pen unless you do get, of course, that lower plate, which we did just get slammed in. So I want to try and get this Lorraine here. Lorraine is a very deadly tier 8 autoloader. Again, just bouncing the shots in the side. I want to, of course, not get hit by that AMX. But at the same time, I'm doing a great job here. You can see bouncing 675 damage now. Are we going to be able to bounce the last one? Ooh, nice tap into that Lorraine. But uh, yeah, we blocked 2,100 and uh, 2,100 damage here. And that pretty much shows that this vehicle is pretty much one of the strongest tier 8 heavies in the game. Even against tier 9s, it's still able to bounce a crazy amount of shells. And then we move on to the gun. Well, this gun is the same type of gun on your IS-4. It has the same damage at 420. Now, that's very nice because that means you're very easily able to trade with enemy opponents. Even if you're going up against, let's say, an IS-3, you might not have the most DPM. In fact, an IS tank usually has way more DPM than this, 
But the nice thing is, is while you lose your DPM, you're gaining a little bit of alpha, and uh, as well, the gun actually isn't that inaccurate. It, for some reason, on the statistics, the gun say, oh, it's awful, it's got bad aiming time, and as well, it has bad dispersion, but I'm not buying it, because when I run this tank, honestly, and you'll notice in these games, every single shell I fire tends to go exactly where I aim. Now, occasionally, and especially probably after I said that I jinxed something, but uh, occasionally, you will get the weird random miss that the Russian tanks do, but honestly, this tank has one of the best best IS guns I've ever used. The IS-3 gun is the, not the IS-3 gun, the IS-3 Defender gun is about 5 billion times worse. Same for the IS-5, same for the IS-2SH, the Glacial 112. I actually like this gun because it is fairly accurate. You can see, even while I'm driving full speed here, sped here, yes, while I'm driving full speed here, the gun still isn't bloomed that much. And as well, the tank has a very nice amount of top speed at around 35 kilometers per hour, and it has a great power to weight ratio, so you're able to stay at your top speed. There's really nothing bad I can say about the tank. Now, here's the deal. A lot of people call the vehicle broken, overpowered. I personally will always argue that this tank is not overpowered. I think it's very strong. In fact, I think it's definitely stronger than your average tier 8 heavy tank, but that just means that it's better than your average tier 8 heavy. That doesn't mean it's overpowered in the means that it's changing games, it's causing you to win 99% of your games like a smasher. This tank doesn't really have any factors on it that make it just ridiculously strong out there on the battlefield. Of course, you've got good armor, but it's not spectacular armor. You can see I was penned by the Luva there, so it is easily penned if you know what you're doing. At the same time, the tank has a good gun, but it's got some of the worst values on dispersion in the game, and uh, it has very, very bad DPM, so there's a lot of balancing factors on this tank. It's just that in a position like this, I'm hiding my lower plate, and actually, I am not scared whatsoever, even of a tank like that SU-152 on the enemy team. Now, that shell, the fact that that bounced, you can see that literally, yeah. That's where I said my luck will maybe go a little bit haywire, because that should not have bounced in any world. But, uh, you know, we still got plenty of time here to reload, try and get another shot into this SU-152. There we go, nice tap for 473 damage. I might actually do a little bit of a gamble here. As you can see, it looks like we can penetrate the lower plate of that SU-152 with a high explosive shell, which means that if we do try this, um, you know, it looks like we're just gonna be firing a standard shell, and it also looks like we didn't need it because uh, the HE apparently would have rolled uh, either way a little bit lower there. So I'm gonna make sure that I can't, um, can't be penned in the side by this 49. Well, this guy doesn't know what he's doing and he's smoking something, but uh, it is now a one versus five. And as much as I love this tank, we probably will not be pulling this off anytime soon, uh, ever. Because yeah, sadly our team was just not spectacular. I can say that uh, very confidently. So let's get a nice HE shell right in the side of the Type 62. Gonna try and angle my tank the best here, but uh, yeah, this is a strong tank, but as you can see here, it doesn't have the most overpowered armor. As I did say, once you are rushed in this vehicle, it doesn't necessarily do the best, and well, yeah, my team definitely fell apart very, very quickly there, but still able to get out about 2,500 damage. You did see that we were able to do top on the team, bounce quite a bit of shells. About half the shells we received did bounce on the vehicle, actually more than half of the shells, a lot of them going into the tracks. As well, we were able to get a couple shells out there. Sadly, our first shot did bounce that SU, but you know what? It turns out that we got a high roll anyways, so I'm fine either way with that, but we will do one last game in the Object 2.5 to you. So the big question, is it worth it to buy this tank, or should you maybe get a vehicle like the 112-2? So I personally feel that this is honestly the best tier 8 tournament vehicle you can get. We obviously have proof that people are running them in tournaments very, very prominently. While the Tiger 2 is good, while the T-32, as we saw, is also a very widespread and chosen tank, it's just that the Object 2.5 to you has everything going for it. It's able to deal with medium tanks. It's able to get in the positions very quickly. As well, it's got that big gun, so you can trade shells. You might not have the most DPM, but you can trade with the enemy. And as long as the enemy doesn't push on you, which they probably won't, judging that you are in an object 2-5 to you, it does do a great job at pretty much everything in the game. So I actually think that this is one of the best bangs for your buck you can get in Blitz. And the great news is that this tank was very, very cheap last time it came into stores. In fact, it caused ratings to kind of get a, a little bit wonky for the time when it came out, but I think it was about 20 to $15 when it came out. I think it was actually 15 which, yeah, that's an extremely cheap price tag for this tier 8 vehicle. So if it does come out again, for $15, keep your eyes opened because it honestly is a spectacular tier 8 tank at that. So I would love to get a shell into that uh, that 49, but as we can see here, the enemy team, well, they got a lot of vehicles over on their side. Thankfully, the deadliest of them all, the ISU-152, was taken out, which is great for me. And as well, the, uh, the RHM is not going to be following suit anytime soon. So let's try 
Ooh, I did track the guy, which, you know what, I'll actually take it because it caused my T34 to get that shell in. But now let's push rate on this AMX 5100. I'm really not worried about him at all, even in the slightest. So here we go. Let's get a nice tap right into the upper plate. A little bit of a low roll, but again, I don't really matter. I don't really care if my tank does low roll if I'm able to get out damage in the end. So uh, sadly, we got this 49 carcass right here, which we've got to push out of the way to... Uh, to uh, get some damage out here, but we've got the Pantera to the side. I would love to get this VK100, so let's shoot him on the move in the lower plate. Oof, maybe not in the lower plate, but uh, you know what? I may have bitten more than I could chew here. Oof, we did bounce that shell, but yes, I'm gonna back up. I don't wanna play with necessarily all of that right now. So um, let's just back up here. Let's see if we can get a shell into that lower plate finally. Oh, again, you can see occasionally some of your shots really don't wanna work in this tank. You can aim in, you can look at the lower plates, but uh, just sometimes the, the armor gets the best of you on this tank and it doesn't pen all the shells. So let's finish off this Pantera, maybe with an average roll. Again, there is your Russian accuracy for you. So sometimes the tank does fall apart with this accuracy, but of course, if you try and aim in your shells, I'm not really, you know, super trying here to pen all of my shots. This isn't a, uh, a battle that's really going to affect my win rate. We're going to win either way. Very nice roll there for the tank. But um, again, I'm going to try and face hug this VK, see if we can bounce the shells. Actually, both of these are VKs, but um, still doing a great amount of damage here. Actually, 1,200 assistance, and uh, there goes the VK100, and again, a nice tap right into the 45. Didn't do necessarily the most damage, but still able to break almost about the 2,000 barrier. Sadly, just a couple of our shots really did not want to pen trait in this game. But again, you could see that the armor works great on this tank, able to bounce uh, about 33% of the shells you received, but of course we only received about two shells. So it doesn't really matter on that game, I guess, for the armor. But overall, it's a great tank, a great bang for your buck if it does come cheap, especially if you have like one of these gold box offers here. This is a great deal for 20 bucks and you might be able to get the object 252 next time it does come out. But of course, if it's more than $50, Definitely don't spend your money on it, especially because Wargaming may have seen, hey, this tank was used very widely in North America on the tournament, so maybe we'll ramp up the prices. I don't think they'll do that because the last time it was sold was cheaper, but hey, you never know what Wargaming will do. So, of course, if you like this type of content, please make sure to slap that subscribe button down below. It really does help out the channel. Once again, thank you to Wargaming for letting me host the commentary, at least, for the tournament. And thank you as well, or not thank you, but congratulations to Pramo and GMA on their great job in the tournament. So other than that, I hope you're all doing well out there. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.